Hi, Kevin here. Uh, this is my first video on Patreon, so I hope you like it. In this video, I'm going to show you one of my sculpts that I've done recently. For Christmas, I got this book. If you can see that on there. And in it is um, concepts for the white worms that was in Solo. Um, let me just show you some of the concepts that they've got in here. Okay, so here's some concepts of the white worm. So I can show you if you can see that. That's the first one. Um, here's some other ones. But the one that intrigued me the most is this one down here. Let's see if I can get the lighting right. There we go. This concept here is um, number two in this book. It's marked as number two and I found it really intriguing so I did a version of my own of that based on that concept it's sped up um, but if you want to see any particular piece of this video uh, slow down half the speed happy to do that not a problem um, but I think what I've done is good and it's fine and you can see what's going on and I narrate over the top of it so uh, for the most part but like I said any questions or you want to see more you want to see it slow down whatever just let me know so here it is hope you enjoy it okay so here we go and you can see that I pretty much always start with a primitive if you're gonna follow my course on here or on Udemy once it launches uh, then you'll see that uh, most scopes are started uh, with, a, with a primitive, like a sphere, U usually with a sphere. I uh, rarely start it with, unless I'm doing some hard surface uh, modeling in, in uh, ZBrush, then I start with a sphere or a cube if it's hard, hard surface, but um, rarely that. See, I'm just using the standard brush here, pretty much. Um, nothing super special, just getting basic shapes down. Um, nothing more than that. Not really thinking about detail, not thinking about anything other than just the fundamental shapes that make up my creature that I'm going to create. Just pulling it around, getting the, the volume correct. Second part of the worm body it's kind of like in three layers um, so I kind of put a sphere inside a sphere inside a sphere if you like yeah again just working in basic shapes using the standard brush It's always good to have a base. I always try and get a base down that way you can, um, you know, it feels like it's a bit more grounded if you like. Um, you don't have to do that, it's just something I do. I quite like doing. Uh, another sphere, uh, I mean, appended another sphere for its, for its face and uh, its head. See again, just making all the shapes, getting the horns there in place, figuring out where the eyes are going. Just cleaning up the previous shapes as you go along, adding more, a little more detail, nothing too much at this stage. Not even in Dynamesh at this at the moment. I'm just working in uh, with the polygons, just getting the shape right. And here, I just wanted to do some tentacles. Uh, the three tentacles that come up. If you saw the uh, if you saw the original picture at the start, then you'll see it's got sort of three tentacles coming off it. And this was the first one of that. I just duplicated it and 
use the move brush to position it correctly. To where I want it to, wanted it to be. And that, that changes a lot as you as you go through as as I go through the sculpt. It never sits in the same position. Now create that those spheres to start with just to launch just to launch the tentacle from and then I get rid of the sphere and continue sculpting the tentacle. It's just a little thing I got in the habit of doing. Uh, it's just handy to have something there to launch it from if you like. Okay, now switch on Dynamesh here and start adding a little more detail. Just making, making defining the shapes a little more. Um, blending in the tentacles that are coming off. So I've joined them now into the first part of the body that I created. And then I um, start adding a little bit of detail sort of the first layer of detail if you like now here I put in some pretty basic shapes for the arms um, and the hands just so I've got them in position, I don't actually start. I don't actually start sculpting these in detail until much later, but they're just there for reference, really. Just get the position right of where they're going to go. sits on the other side. I try and use um, X uh, mirror sculpting as long as I possibly can but with this model I found that it got a bit too it was too um, obvious I didn't want it I, I switched it off quite quickly but I normally leave it on as for as long as I possibly can just because it speeds up workflow But in this case, because of the nature of the creature, because it's got lots of flabby bits and lots of bits hanging off it, I kind of switched it off on the outer shell. Adding some more sort of medium detail, if you like, to the outer body part. Trying to make it look like sort of gravity is pulling it down a little there. Start work on the belly of the beast, <clears throat> so marking up some basic shapes. Using smooth, using the standard brush. You know, I use the the clay brush and the standard brush mostly, I think, for building up um, the sculpt. They're the main go-tos for this kind of work for me and combined with the move brush and that's um, 
that's what I use mostly pretty much and then you can see I'm adding some more surface detail there just to get a feel for it and I do sort of jump around on when I'm sculpting because uh, I like to sort of keep the feeling for the whole whole model you know I want to make sure that it sort of feels right all over um, and I can then if I work on one little bit I can then take that to sort of the next bit and the next bit and and keep progressing like that okay just adjusted the height of it because it felt a little bit stumpy so I just made it a bit taller to stand up a little more give him some chin flab <laughs> if you like some extra chins and then work on the mouth, shaping the mouth a little there. Taking that surface texture through to the head a little bit there. shape of the head correct we're using the move brush it's always a, it's a good tool slotting in some eyeballs <laughs> always brings a character to life when you put in eyeballs some eyelids so when you start shaping the eyes that's that's when it sort of comes starts to come alive a little bit <laughs> see I continue to add sort of secondary detail nothing too major yet uh, but still detail and you can see I've got X sort of selected that and then I switch it off because uh, I don't want it to be too similar but it's still on at the moment it just speeds up you know it just speeds up work basically the amount of work you need to do pretty common for doing um, characters and now you can see I'm basically using the alpha for that screen texture there and the spray brush and the spray mode on the brush again you're going to learn all this stuff in my course if you follow it through so that's pretty cool continue adding some detail to the face See when the shadow pops there, because I do a little render every now and again using the PBR render top right button up there, just uh, um, just to see what it looks like every now and again. started working on tentacles here and the tentacles were a bit of a challenge actually the heads in particular not the not the bit that I'm doing now but in a moment 
I started working on the first head and I tried three different techniques. I tried a, um, as you'll see, I tried a sort of a distorted look and that really just didn't work. So I sort of, sort of abandoned that pretty quickly. I wanted a sort of distorted, horrific looking head on these tentacles. That was my first sort of initial thought on those things but it just wasn't working so I left it and you'll see me do that in a moment okay so working on uh, some more of the surface using alpha it's a pretty powerful method for adding sort of surface detail that you can notice I still haven't done anything to the arms and hands uh, just adding a spine to the tentacles just gives it a bit more character and some sort of vines wrapped around around the uh, tentacle So this is where I start the first head. Horrific, bit of a waste of time, but I left it in anyway, just so you can see that, you know, the, the process for these things, sometimes it's just a bit of a disaster. It's just, I don't know what I was thinking. It's like, this is just ridiculous. It looks like a sort of a sock puppet <laughs> or something like that. It was um, a little bit ridiculous. I tried to distort it, make it look ugly, put some eyeballs in it, and it's like it just was not working at all. Um, yeah, it was bad, really bad. I just didn't like it. Desperately try to sort of make it look mean and distorted, and and uh, it wasn't, it didn't work. So this is a good example of you know, just because you try something and it's there doesn't mean you say it's right. You can easily just delete it. You know, remove it, delete it, try something else, which is what I do eventually. And, um, you know, move on to the next. Don't be afraid to delete stuff. It's really, uh, it's really an important part of art, being able to sort of say no and, and then delete it, move on. Even tried to <laughs> add some teeth, and again that didn't work. It's just it goes just from bad to worse. It just keeps getting worse. I don't know why I stood up. You know, I don't know why I did it for so long. To be perfectly honest, I think I was trying too hard, um, so I abandoned it, and I worked on some. He's got like these two necklaces that come off his off his neck and hang down his body. So I put them in. Okay, so 
Okay, so that's what we'll start work on the second tentacle now. For this one, I sort of abandoned the, the tentacle and tried a different head. Um, but this one, I tried a more of a snaky type head. I thought that would look cool, you know, if it was like a snake head coming out of it, coming, you know, coming at you. But again, this didn't work. I just didn't. It looked okay. It wasn't great. It didn't, it didn't, I wasn't feeling it again. So I, again, I abandoned this. And you, you'll realise that if you've seen the um, initial image. I mean, it's not that it was a bad snake head or anything. It just didn't work with the actual fantastical sort of feel of the character. I just wasn't feeling. Again, I wasn't feeling this. It, just, it wasn't going anywhere. Don't think I spent so much time on this as I did the first one. But you know, I left it in again, just so you can see, you know, mistakes. We all make mistakes. Artists make mistakes. A lot of the artists on YouTube and, and the videos that you watch take out the mistakes because they don't want you to see them. But I'm not. I'm not that fussed really. I think it's important to learn from mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, you don't learn. It's as simple as that. How are you supposed to know what's right and wrong if you don't make mistakes? And also, you know, experimenting, trying different things is always is, is part of art as well. It's really important. Let you try different things. I did spend more time up here on this, it looks like, than I thought I did. Um, desperately trying different things again. It's got to work, but it doesn't. It doesn't. I get rid of it. And the third time, I just thought, no, I'm just going to go for a mouth suction thing. And that worked perfectly in my mind. So that's it. That's what I want to do. And it's just like a big mouth suction pad with teeth and sort of a, a gullet, if you like, which could, I imagined it sort of latching onto flesh and clamping down and sort of sucking, you know, a big sort of suction pad. It could be quite devastating. This big tongue thing that comes out. And this is the one I went with. What I eventually do, as you'll see, is cut off <laughs> the other two heads and then copy this one to each of the other tentacles. And that worked. That was perfect. You know, if you want me to sort of slow down just a section of this uh, video and put it up as a separate video, that's fine. I can do that too because um, I know these these can this. I think this was about four hours work in total, and if I just played the whole thing, um, you know, real time, you'd just get bored. So this is sped up quite a lot. Um, but if you're interested in one thing in particular. Um, there's going to be plenty more, so there's going to be plenty of opportunity to um, um, to see other videos uh, in face in ZBrush, especially if you're going to follow the course. So um, it's not a it's not a problem. If you're a Patreon, you'll get to see all this stuff, and you can ask questions. And I'm more than happy to do a particular video on a on a particular subject. You know one element of this uh, if you want me to do that that's fine okay so I think this is where I cut them off <laughs> yep cut off the heads and 
and then I copy the one that I like and stick it on the other tentacle, shrink it down a little, make it fit, make it work. And then attach it. Copy another one, put it on the other side. And that worked perfectly. Just dynamesh them, blended them in, and um, just finished them off basically. And here I'm just using the um, mask tool to, um, yeah, to pose them. Basically, just doing a little bit of posing uh, using the mask tool, which works pretty well. Get a twisted sort of look, which is nice. I like that. You know, the more character you can put into your sculpts, uh, the more interesting they will become. I mean, this one ended up being fairly static. I could have made them a lot more dynamic, um, a bit, you know, much better position. So that's just, a, uh, I'll show you how to do that later, but it's just so you can see it in different angles all on, on one screen. Quite handy. And I think from here on in, I really go into sort of the real low-level detail now, the sort of side, the high detail, lots of miniature detail. I work on the back and the on the tentacles. So the basic form is there now. Um, all the shapes, all the elements that I want. I'm just going to start adding lots of little details, spiky bits on the tentacles. The spine. Again, using the alpha uh, to add detail surface detail to the skin to the back you see the arms still hasn't been done they take they, I do do them in a minute and it doesn't take very long I feel like you know once you've got you've got a really good base it's quite easy to add elements to it uh, from there on Just getting rid of a lot of the junk objects that I had in place and sorting out my my uh, stack there basically. Now I start adding some detail to the base. And this really sort of brings it alive. So what I want, yeah, I want the sort of like ground look like he's coming up. I want him to look like he's just come out of the ground. So I pull some of the ground up around the worm, if you like. Just adds to the effect. and some additional sort of tentacles coming off him because in the description in the book it was like they wanted to give it a sort of a tree like feeling so i was kind of thinking bark and i was thinking sort of roots you know all that kind of thing and um that's kind of where the inspiration came from for all these elements because it kind of looked like tree roots coming off the base of a tree 
and the, the sort of outer layer of the worm looks like tree bark. You know, that was what I was thinking. You can see here, I pull up the bits of earth around the worm. Sled brush is such a creative tool. Once you've mastered it, and you will if you do the course, um, then it will um, pay dividends. It's just quite therapeutic and very creative tool. It's amazing. It's a bit like substance painter for the texture, you know, for the sculpting world. It's um, a bit like substance painter. I had the same sort of. You know, after I learned this, I learned substance away, you know, quite a while ago, and I had the same feeling from that. It's a very creative tool that lets you use. Um, it's just an art tool, basically. It's, there's no. I mean, a lot of people struggle to start with, but once you've got the hang of it, it's it's pretty immense. And here I go into the arms and start creating the arms. And I actually attach the arms once I've done it to the outer part of the body. It's awesome. Dino mesh and blend them with that part of the body, which gave it a really good look. Do some fingers here. I often quite use, you can see I'm using the inflate brush as well there. That's a really cool tool to, to use. Especially for fingers and things like if you, you know, if you just want to make them fatter or thinner, you know, that's a that's a great tool, a great brush. I keep calling them tools; it's not tools; they're brushes, um, as you'll soon discover. You know, when you're concepting, you know, you're not too fast about the, the minute details. You know, like I can just do fingers there. I don't want to have to. I don't have to really go to town on the fingernails. I've, I've got the shape. It reads well. The hand reads quite well. The knuckles are there. You know, you know what it is just by looking at that. So you know, that's all I needed to do. And this is where I attach the arm to the edge of and get it in the right position first just making sure it sits quite nicely then dynamesh it on but, well first I, I copy it across so I've got two and then I dynamesh it and blend it with the outer skin I'm just posing the, the left arm there tidying it up Using the clay brush is pretty awesome. It's a really good filler brush that. And if you want to bulk something out, you know the clay brush is good for that. Again, just posing the hand, tidying up the wrist. I tend to do that a lot. Like I said, the pose could have been a bit more dynamic, but it, you know, I think it served the purpose. Just finite, finalizing sort of details, twisting posing, you know, all that kind of stuff, and then just tweaking the, the mesh. I think here I start colouring. Yes, so, so I start adding colour, uh, just painting the RGB and the materials. I don't show all of this because it was taking quite a long time. I take my time on painting, so I just show the start of it and then bits of it as I go forward, quite quick, fast forward through it. Painting in ZBrush, I'm 
perhaps not the most I enjoy it and you get a really good result but I much prefer substance painter but it just to take into substance painter you just gotta uh, you just gotta optimize the mesh quite substantially for it to to fit in there to fit into a substance eye um, because otherwise it could be too dense in terms of poly count. Just laying down some basic color. To start with, uh, painting, the difference being this is painting vertex color. You're painting the color of the vertices. Um, you're not actually putting pixels down like you do in Substance Painter. That's the fundamental difference. So if your if your mesh is not dense enough, then you're not going to get a very good uh, look. It needs to be pretty dense for it to to colour well. Just adding some sort of colours there for the skin, and that's why I jumped forward. Because um, I started painting a lot of it green, put in the mouth, did all that. Now I'm sort of selecting materials, just having a look what materials work best for each of the elements. And uh, yeah, pretty much there now. I painted the horns, painted the inside of the mouths, got some pinky flesh colours there. And yeah, I was pretty happy once I got to the end. I lightened up the face a little bit before I finished. Added some texture to the sort of necklace parts of the mesh. So I changed it. Not very many polygons in those spheres because you don't get that close to them, so it doesn't need to be that complicated. Not spheres, loops, I should say. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty much it. That's probably what that's what I did. Adjusted the position of those very quickly so they don't go through the mesh. And that was it. That was it. That was the final window. I took it into Photoshop just to drop that background in and a um, bit of adjustments of the levels. And that was it. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>